childhood story is we all have a story. And um, some stories are good stories and some bad, some are bad stories, and some start off good and they turn bad. So here's my story as a little girl. I had one grandpa here and I had one grandpa here. I was very blessed to have a family where we did things with both sides, because I know that that's not always normal. And I loved my grandpas, loved them. So as a five and a half, six year old little girl, I was being paid not to talk. No harm intended, no foul intended. When I get into a, uh, an environment where I'm super comfortable, I'm a chatty Cathy. And so running around in a family party with all of my cousins and candy to eat, my grandpas were like, you have enough of Stephanie talking. <laughs> and so I'm like this, and I'm so excited. As a five and a half or six year old, it was truly one of the best days of my life, right? I'm the apple of my grandpa's eyes. I'm gonna be 50 cents richer at the end of this experience, right? <laughs> and um, in the time we were living in Palo Alto and in a traditional old neighborhood where there was the corner market, and I wasn't quite old enough to walk to the market by myself. So that meant I was gonna have 50 cents and we'll be 52 next month. So back then there really still was penny candy. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, it's so good. And that meant, you know, either my mom or my dad or both of them were going to walk me down um, to this store. Well, what ends up happening in this story is what turned out to be one of the best days of my life as a little girl completely rocked my world as an adult. Because what my subconscious heard that day was your value is in not speaking. So I spent the better part of my adult life never understanding why I couldn't sell anything, why I couldn't make money, why there was a cap on what I could earn and generate. Um, I couldn't understand why my girlfriends, my business partners, my colleagues could go out and do all of these incredible things and yet I had this desire in me. I knew that there was something, there was a disconnect and I couldn't for the life of me put words to it or understand it and it was through community that as I started to have conversations with other women, figure out what was going on, that this story kind of reemerged with a different perspective. And so I, I tell you this story, if there is something in your life that you know that you have a deep heart desire, but yet you can't figure out why you can't bring it to fruition, why you can't put legs to it or words to it, do some, do some digging, do some again. And it, it was a lie that I believed, but I didn't understand the lie. And so as I've grown into my position now as the CEO and founder of the Tapestry Network, it still is something that will trigger a thought process. It will trigger something that discounts my value, that discounts my worth. And so that leads me into my story about Stephanie. So Stephanie said, oh my gosh, uh, she had made a post, um, I think it was the end of last year or early this year, that they were looking for speakers. And so I'm like, oh, I would love the opportunity to speak for you. And so we were going back and forth being on Facebook Messenger, and she said, I would love for you to tell about the success that you've had with the Tapestry Network. And how many of you, um, like me, uh, take to Facebook to talk a lot? Show of hands, anybody share thoughts and ideas and sure. expressions on Facebook? Okay. Sure. Yeah. So my, my instinct after I was honored to have the invitation to come speak here was like, what success? You know, I, and I said, well, can I talk about my failures? And I made this long post on Facebook about, um, you know, we haven't, we haven't had success. I don't know what she's talking about, but I'd sure be glad to share my failures because I don't want anybody to have to go through what I went through, what I've experienced. And I know that there are no failures. There's always a lesson to be learned. So again, in community, 
um, a very dear friend of mine kind of gave me a spanking on social media and said, um, hello, Missy, can I tell you what you have achieved? Can you get your perspective off of what maybe isn't what you want, maybe isn't exactly how you thought it was going to be, but can I tell you about your successes? Can I tell you about your impact? Can I tell you about the value you have brought to this world? And again, I'm not sharing this story because I'm trying to build myself up. I'm sharing this story to challenge you on perspective. And again, it's that little girl story that it, it keeps going back to that. My value is not speaking. Mm -hmm. And so I look at life um, sometimes through kind of a foggy set of glasses, foggy set of lens. And I love, absolutely love what Empower Hour stands for and how you guys come together and rally around one another and build each other up because it is so lonely to do life without sisters. It is so lonely to do life without being surrounded by like-hearted and like-minded women. Um, I, based off of your guys' introductions, everybody in here is an entrepreneur in some flavor. And does anybody still have a corporate girlfriend? Sure. Okay. Do your corporate girlfriends get you? Probably not. So my best friend is an HR manager for a very large construction company. So I can't talk to her. Now, I come from corporate. And even though I'm so many years out, I still have an understanding and a flavor of the conversation that she's having. I can have empathy for her, even if I don't quite understand how laws have changed. You know, I've been a part of hiring and firing people, and so I get, you know, some of it. But how's that Facebook ad running for you? Right. Um, how is it that you sold a business and started another business? You know, what did you need? What kind of lawyer did you need? What kind of business contract did you need? Um, you've left a medical career and you're now working in something else. Who walked you through that? Who, who's been your champion? Who's rallied for you? Who's rallied with you? You know, I could sit here and go on and on and on. As much as she loves me, she doesn't understand me. And so again, that is why building a network of like-hearted and like-minded women is so critical in the value of what Empower Hour does. And so when I first came out of um, corporate America, um, my background is retail, so I was a senior executive with Macy's. Then I went and worked for um, a company that designed and sold a point of sale and inventory control system to small to medium sized retailers. And for lack of a better word, I was an ombudsman. ombudsman. So I helped our design team develop and come up with new features and benefits to the software that we sold. And so I worked with the sales team, uh, and we were an international organization, and helped train them on new features. And then when they would go out and sell, then I'd go to R&D and say, well, this is what's working, what's not working. This is what the sales teams are saying. How do we improve the software? And it was in that leap um, of leaving you know, the big corporate America um, to a small corporate job that I really discovered that I have an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was first um, introduced to networking. Um, because when you work at Macy's, it's not about building relationships, it's about who, it's about your corporate um, marketing team creating the right ads to drive the people into your store. If you have it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. I mean, it's about great customer service, it's about developing teams, it's about doing all of those things, but you're not going out there and developing a relationship with somebody. Um, I developed a relationship in-house, and hopefully they'll come back, and if we give great customer service, and I develop my teams to do the same thing. So after I left um, the company, the uh, sales, uh, bleh, the software company I was working for, and I took this ginormous leap of faith and said, I'm going to open up my own business. And so my mom and I created something called the Salazier Boutique um, as a on words and we actually sold and manufactured 
purses out of scraps of fabric. So, you know, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. You can't take something and ugly and make it pretty. Well, of course you can. <laughs> and then it led into buying, you know, purses and handbags and gift items and jewelry. And we were actually a mobile boutique. And at my height, I had seven women working for me. And we would go from state agencies to homes to senior, senior facilities. And we would set up our boutique and we would sell things. And that is when I discovered networking and the power of networking and the power of building relationships. And so again, kind of going back to my best friend and again, uh, you know, how do you take what you're learning and apply it to your now new life uh, when you didn't grow up in that world? And so it was a really interesting experience for me. Luckily, um, a gal that I love, and we've done things together for, um, you guys can pass one of these and I'll talk about it in just a second. Uh, we've done things together for a couple of decades now and she was the one who first introduced me to networking um, and said, you really start need, you start, you need to start building some friendships out in the business community. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? What is this? I've never heard of, you know, and my dad was the chamber president at the time. Um, and so a chamber networking event is very different than this. Um, and so like the chamber just didn't quite feel right to me. Um, I'm definitely more comfortable and my business is more in alignment with being um, with women um, or chambers. I think they've changed a lot in the last, you know, 20 years, but they used to be very male heavy. Mm -hmm. um, and so what does a girl who's never networked before, who is super, super duper shy, um, I am an introvert um, by design, that's the way God created me. And so to have to walk into a room full of strangers was like, oh, I'm gonna vomit. Like I cannot do this. <laughs> And so that's when uh, this gal's name is Deidre, and so that's when Deidre started showing me about the power and the value of networking. And so you guys are at a networking, I mean Empower Hour is not just a networking organization, but it is a networking organization. I've heard you guys, which has been awesome, about the business that you're doing with one another. Oh yeah, I love that, thank you, I have something for you. I mean that's what building a community is all about. Mm -hmm. And so while you guys do so much more, you are all business women. And so that's, it just kind of goes hand in hand as you get to know people. And we know, um, because those people, and I couldn't even quote where the, this phrase has come from, we do business and life with people we know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And so when you come into an environment like this where it's so much more than just business, um, I love the heart of the organization. I love what you're doing. I love what you stand for. I love your give backness. Um, and so that really helps you guys continue to build that know, like, and trust. And so you guys are very similar to the, the, the Tapestry Network. And I bet if you asked people who um, have come into the organization how long um, you've existed, like not a, not somebody that's been there from the ground level, but somebody who's kind of come in. The, the story would be probably very similar to the Tapestry Network. Oh, we've been around for gosh, I don't know, maybe four or five years already, and maybe you're only a year old. It's because you've come with your hearts exposed, and so the relationships are so much deeper, so much broader, so that you guys have accomplished so much in a short period of time because of how Stephanie and the other co-founders have set up this community. And so it's just, it's really, it speaks to uh, the power of community. It speaks to the power of networking. It speaks to the power of showing up with a light, with a like heart and a like mind. So I know that um, 20 years ago, well, it's not quite 20 years ago, but it's getting close. Um, when I first started networking, networking was very different. It was all about, you know, here's my business card, here's your business card. You make this ginormous database and you would hope that something would land from it. Um, and then with the onset of social media, um, myself, I will be the first one to raise my hand. I got very comfortable behind the screen um, because as an introvert, I was still able to make connections and I was still able to have an impact um, and then you couple that with my value is in not speaking. So picking up the phone is still very challenging for me. I mean, I've gotten better over the years, but it is still
still not my first form of communication. I would still much rather send a Facebook message or a text message. Uh, so then we have kind of gotten away from the value of face-to-face -face networking. And in that kind of that hiatus that, that a lot of the business community took, I think we've forgotten some of the basic networking skills and the principles behind networking and the value that networking brings. So I've created this little networking circle. Um, my organization is a Christ-centered organization, so we believe in God's service and business. That's how we stand. So um, purple for us is our color for faith. Um, orange is our color for service, and green is our color for business. And so every morning, you want to start with a place of gratitude. And again, this is coming from the lens of putting on my networking lenses, right? So every morning, if you send some sort of a message, or if you are comfortable with the phone, picking up the phone and leaving somebody a voicemail, or maybe you get the privilege of actually having a dialogue with somebody, um, it not only brightens their day, but it sets the tone for your own day. So whatever your belief system is, I don't care what you believe, who you praise, who you worship, if you start your day in gratitude, your day will go so much better. It's like a statistic, it's been proven. There's so much science behind it. So when you do that, um, when you take that time to say, oh my gosh, I see you because that is the number one thing that people crave more than anything else in this world is to be seen, known, and acknowledged. So if you can come from that place of I see you, I hear you, I appreciate you, you will, you can completely change somebody's life. And I was listening to the radio the other day and um, there's a young man, doesn't have a lot of money, um, and he actually mows lawns, that's how he supports himself, but he has such a heart for the mentally challenged people. And he writes in a letter every day to somebody he's never gonna meet, somebody he's never gonna know, and tells them how valuable they are. Mm -hmm. That one act of selfish, selfish, selflessness has saved five lives because somebody took the time to be grateful for somebody else's existence. Um, then once a week, um, email a potential mentor. Anybody in this room know everything that they wanted to know about every aspect of their life? Nope. nope. How many of you would love to have a mentor or have a connection to somebody that's gone before you? Yep. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Most people who are good in business want to help those that are coming behind them. That's exactly what this organization is about. So you can't serve to your best ability unless somebody is serving you. So it's this amazing, beautiful, big circle that we have access to. Most people, they don't want to be taken advantage of and they want appropriate boundaries. And there are some people that you could probably never touch and that's okay, but there's lots of people that you can get access to. And again, if you acknowledge them, see them, and appreciate them for who they are and say, send them a little note. I saw this amazing article um, on you um, on the news, or I saw this amazing article in a newspaper or a local magazine. I think you are amazing. And I really would love it if I could have 20 minutes of your time to ask you this one question because I know that what you can, what you can answer will make a big difference in how I can better serve the community. Who's gonna say no to that? Mm -hmm. And if they are gonna say no, they're probably somebody that's maybe kind of a fake, a fake persona and you don't want that. Again, once a week, you want to email a good friend and make plans. I think we all forget the value of friendship sometimes. We get into our busy seasons. We get doing things. And again, it's just that, that friendship. You know, what can you do to move your friendship forward? If your schedules are super busy, and maybe you have the privilege of having a more dynamic social group, maybe it's putting a group of four or five ladies together. Can we get together? Um, you know, for yogurt on Wednesday afternoon, or you know, have a toe, go get our toes done. But again, keeping that is again part of the networking. Um, on a career move, 
Um, send somebody an email that you are acquainted with and check in on them or share something. So I love when I meet people and I have the ability to find an article and say, oh my, and I do this all the time, oh my gosh, this Facebook article just came up or I just saw this blog post, it made me think of you, here you go, um, here's some great knowledge for you. And the response that I get is always like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you were thinking of me. And again, it's, it's me just giving, right? It's just giving. And then the last thing um, on your networking circle is, sounds like most of us in this room don't have an actual B-O-S-S, -S. we are our own bosses. Um, but I would imagine you have somebody in your upline or an accountability partner. Um, I know personally as an entrepreneur, I can get very easily sucked into doing a lot of nothing, right? Uh, a lot of squirrel holes and rabbit holes and shiny objects. And so having that accountability partner at the end of the week to say, this is actually what I used my time with this week. Um, it's a very eye-opening and sometimes very sobering. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to write this down. Uh, and so again, it's that way. But if you do have a boss, um, and sometimes we get to work pretty independently, just keeping them apprised of what we're doing is pretty powerful. And again, uh, it helps them understand you, what you do, and how you serve your, your organization beyond um, maybe the general expectations of what your job is about. And to say all of this um, is, it's your networking circle. It's just, it's to enhance life and relationships. So when you're out there networking, it's not about just building your database. It's not about just getting somebody's business card. It really is about having an impact. Um, with all of the surveys that I've done and the research that I've done, most women um, that are of life, like us, their two of their greatest desires, you know, beyond family and those normal things, is they want to know that they're having an impact with the people that they touch and that they're working to build a legacy. Mm -hmm. And so when you come from this place of this networking circle, those are what will be the outcome of how people remember you, your impact, and how you will help build your legacy. So thank you. Yay!